10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Tuesday, January 12th. Uh, and that means it's time for Tom and Shane, No Business and Politics. Thanks for joining us this morning. Tom Eaglehoff at uh, AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, Montana. And uh, Shaman Tobin, half man, half amazing, is in Cantaloupe, Canada. So truly international show this morning for you. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll take on a business topic and help your smaller home-based business succeed. Our political shows are on uh, Saturday, 8 to 11, uh, Mountain Time. Uh, click listen now at kmmsam.com, and please share that with your friends. And also, uh, you can watch our past shows or listen to our past shows. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast at kmmsam.com. And don't forget to share that with your friends. And uh, Shane, our uh, topic today, how to pick a great business name. Yeah, it seems to be uh, keen now, especially in the 21st century with the Internet and everything that the outreach that exists. You know, like um, LG, Life is Good, is a kickoff of General Electric, we know. And so everyone is looking for the simplest response. And uh, some cases they get it right. And some cases they don't. Like this new name for eBay, I, I still don't know how you pronounce it. Like why I know. <laughs> you even pronounce for, you know, a buying and selling uh, uh, site that everybody's gotten used to for like, what, 20 years or something? It's, well, it's something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's a good topic to have. <laughs> All right. Uh, hit your volume up a little bit, will you? You're a little... You're a little low, so. Well, yeah, your your business name is is um, very critical because that's how people are going to find you, obviously. And uh, we want to give you some tips today on how to uh, not only pick a business name, but also to um, uh, to some uh, roadblocks to avoid uh, some problems down the road. And the uh, the first one is. Um, is the name already being used by somebody? And uh, you can find that out by doing a search on the on the internet and see if uh, your name is uh, out there, the name of your business, you know, whatever whatever name it happens to be. And, uh, you know, you may or may not find the name uh, out there being used by someone else. It's not always a deal breaker, but it may, uh, it may be, uh, uh, you know, you might, uh, uh, want to rethink it if it's too close. Uh, here in um, in Bozeman, we had a thrift store uh, called Sachs, uh, S-A-C-H-S, and uh, they named themselves Sachs Thrift Avenue. And Sachs Fifth Avenue brought a, a action against them. It was just too close. It wasn't anywhere. A thrift store in Sachs Fifth Avenue was nothing similar. But uh, they did bring an action against them, and uh, boy, uh, yeah, they they just had to go back to Sachs. <laughs> so <laughs> sounded sounded good to me. So and uh, so um, yeah, some other places uh, you can find out if the name is already being used. You can check with the Secretary of State uh, in your state. You, you can go to your Secretary of State website, do a search for the business name and uh, see if there's uh, anything <clears throat> registered in your state. Um, and um, when you do your search, another business in another state where you don't compete directly with them, that's probably not a big deal. They're probably not going to come after you. If, you know, if you're in California and they're in New York, uh, you're not going to compete with each other if you have a landscaping business or a, you know, dry cleaners or something like that. So um, I, I don't know that I would worry if someone else has a similar name. Um, the one thing is that when they do a search for you, both names are going to come up. So that's the only that's the only downside. But if they're in New York and you're in California, probably doesn't matter. So what do you think, Shane? <laughs> well, the, the, the problem, of course, you have, as you've stated uh, clearly, is uh, alternating issues with other state laws and, of course, federal laws. We'll get into the other things um, with regards to the list that, that are important, mm -hmm. you know, um, like trademarking and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the, the biggest problem that you have, even if it's in another state, is it is it in another state, like regionally? Like, uh, do they have several places in the state there that 
that they have. On the other hand, it, it, it's sort of like um, people in the old days with the yellow pages. You know, if you're a plumber, you know, you'd name your company Ace Plumbing. So it would be the first one listed under the yellow mm -hmm. page. And that's sort of the context of, of what you want to look at here, uh, depending on what you name your company. You want to think of it in terms of how will it end up in a search. And so, you know, you if you have got some ideas for a name, you know, you want to not what well, you want to make uh, sense of is how does it how would it m might turn up on a search? Uh, keep in mind until you create a website, the algorithm that Google has won't find it or search it out and put it up on the web for everyone to see. But so you have that advantage to, until you launch a website. But in the meantime, you know, you want to check words or names and particularly spelling uh, to see how it, it might turn up as a search that that is the key to everything if someone googles you pings you uh, you want it to come up in the top 10. yep absolutely right so and as shane alluded to another thing that you want to do is uh, do a trademark search because if you are going to be nationwide that's going to protect you from other businesses in other states uh, you know copying your name your name and if you're going to start a business that you think you may be able to franchise or uh, move out into uh, uh, you know multiple locations in various states then uh, you need to make sure that someone else doesn't have McDonald's Wendy's Burger King uh, Pizza Hut or you know one of those names if that's what you uh, plan on doing so uh, yeah you can go to uh, uh, just uh, Google do a trademark search and it'll take you where you need to go and uh, find that out so pretty simple to uh, pretty simple to do so um, and uh, certainly valuable to you to make sure that you're uh, if you do want to do a trademark, uh, and we'll go into those in future podcasts, uh, trademarks uh, can be pricey, uh, not as pricey as patents, but they are, you know, they're three or four hundred bucks or so. And, you know, they're, you need a uh, logo, a patented or a, uh, you know, trademarkable logo. Uh, you also might need a trade, uh, uh, what's the thing they call the uh, thing, Shane, for, uh, um, uh, if you have a saying like, um, um, if you want to trademark your saying, yeah, that same thing, you, you can trademark a yeah. saying or a word or a name. That's right. Yeah. If there's a name for the, um, you know, like you when know, you care, when you care enough to send the very best, um, it's a trade something, I forget what the name of it is, but anyway, you can, you can also protect that as well. So, mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing we want to talk about, you want to do a, uh, you want to register the .com name. Uh, even if you're not going to immediately have a website, uh, this will protect that name so that, you know, you aren't in business for three or four years and then you decide a, a website is worth it, then your name is gone or someone else just uh, registered it because uh, they found out, you know, maybe they're local and uh, they saw your name did a search, found out you didn't have the name, so they registered it for 10 bucks or whatever. And, uh, you know, now you may have to buy it from them for 100 bucks or, you know, whatever. Uh, so uh, it's a good idea, even if you're not going to immediately put up a website or even if you don't think you'll ever put up a website, things change. You never know. So it's a very small fee and go to uh, GoDaddy, NetworkSolutions.com, or any of the other places that register trade names. Uh, and um, Wix is another one, WIX.com. So you can uh, register your, uh, your name there. And uh, then eventually, if you do want to put up a website, uh, your name is protected. So, Jane? Yeah, you, that's Jane? always important. Uh, name recognition uh is the name of the game at the at, at the beginning obviously you want to do networking and and reference and referrals and people do make a difference because it's a word of mouth is clearly the best form of advertising that you can have in this age and so with the success of your business on a local basis and people referring other people to you through your website or your name you know as a search um, becomes very important all these are practical things to look at at the beginning, prepare for and for the future on your business statement and income statement. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so financial planning always becomes a part of this because there's cost to these additional um, effort you're making. And this is part of what we will be getting to start talking about is the marketing plan. So the, the, the whole concept of uh, what you choose for your name is really the first step in a marketing uh, plan. Uh, when you start talking about a marketing plan, uh, you do have certain costs. Uh, um, Tom can refer to those because he's done this before and he has an idea already of what the specific costs are for, you know, a basic uh, website and and, and uh, being on on uh, social media and advertising on social media uh, to get your name recognition out there. Absolutely right. Yeah. And uh, next thing we need to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat this morning. Um, is your name memorable? Uh, in other words, are people going to remember, uh, Shane was just talking about uh, probably the worst thing a company can do after they've established a name is change it. <laughs> you know, uh, Ebates, uh, the uh, rebate uh, company that was called Ebates, changed their name to, jeez, um, uh, can't remember what it is now. There you go. Perfect yeah. example. <laughs> yeah, perfect example. I can't remember the name. I remember Ebates uh, quite well, but uh, yeah, they changed it to, uh, I don't know, Rakuten Racket, or something. In fact, they even had commercials to teach you how to say the name. Yeah, I that, mean, isn't that eBay or is Rakuten? Yeah, I think. Yeah, Ebates. Right. Yeah, not eBay, Ebates. Uh, yeah. I thought it was E B A Y. No, it isn't. No, they're still eBay as far as I know. Yeah, it's E B A T. It was, it's like rebates only it's ebates on the, on the net. So, uh, but yeah, they, uh, yeah, they changed uh, their name and they also had to come out and tell you how to, how to do it or how to pronounce it. You know I mean, you're trouble if you got to do that. And I don't know who's sitting around in the boardroom saying, let's change the name to something nobody knows how to say. Well, or they went to a marketing company and they said well first of all the name is ridiculous no one's going to remember it because they don't know how to pronounce it so if you're going to do an ad campaign why don't you do it you know a a school ad campaign uh, how to pronounce your name yeah Um, maybe that'll catch on who knows yeah i don't know depends there's no been no water cool conversation for a year so nobody knows (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't know we don't know how to pronounce it we just know where it is or (laughs) what it is so yeah so well, yeah, and this is this brings up another point that uh, you know Amazon uh, could have said uh, you know they could have named themselves Books or Us uh, when they first started because they were a bookseller to begin with, but uh, they uh, you know had to they had to um, spend a bunch of money training people that Amazon is not a river in South America, you know it's a it's a it's a uh, book company yeah it's a well it's everything now well it is now but they started yeah. out selling. yeah they started out selling books that was their that was their thing well and also as we're talking about spelling counts too you can't search the name if you can't spell it yeah <laughs> you, know? you know on the original uh the list you sent me from forbes it was interesting because it's number nine was get feedback on the name and and i love that because they brought up the example of uh, noma nova when yeah. General Motors named a, a car Nova, it, they they didn't do a very good job of researching it. And someone in Spain actually called the company up from the Spanish offices of GM and said, "You do know in Spanish that Nova means doesn't go." Yeah, or no go, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it says doesn't go is the translation. Yeah, but that's it, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The interesting thing about it is they kept the name. They they said, "Well, yeah. we'll, we'll overcome that with marketing," and uh, it, it did become a very successful. Yeah brand so but yeah. it's well, there are lots of examples of that that are, that are quite mm-hmm. funny which is why you should always uh, when you have a uh, an idea for a name you should spend a week you know like a week or two even you, this isn't something you should jump on right away and, and you know get the advice of other people and ask them yeah. how they got their name and how they decided and that they have a list and i always mm-hmm. do a pro and con list take a te- piece of paper put a line down the middle yeah. at the top the subject or solution or problem and then mm-hmm. on the left pros, on the right cons, and write them all down and, and make yeah. sure you, you go through each of them um, in any kind of decision that you make so that you feel that you've, you, you've gotten all the information you need to make the decision. And you may want to hold off and say, mm, maybe I'll, I'll wait a couple of days because things could change in some specific mm-hmm. way. So 
yeah, yeah. decision making is a process it's it's not just instant especially when you run a business but again this is a very important one because your name will be with you as long as your company is that's true yeah and it's very difficult to change your name too because you you know uh, if you're on facebook it's a pain to change your name on facebook so uh or some of the other uh platforms as well well i go so far as to say it's a death knell i, yeah. I don't believe that you'd ever want to change your name um yeah you know, it's like selling your business basically mm -hmm. um and so all the networking you know uh, people that you may have only talked to once people twice maybe half a dozen or a dozen times sure. you know, they, they won't know whether or not you're still involved so mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's a death knell i think for a business and a lot of people regrettably found out the hard way and uh, you you have to keep in mind that uh, th it's important because there's now you know a, a major aspect of all of this is the um what is it the 118,000 private sector jobs mm -hmm. and uh, those 118,000 people represent companies with 500 or fewer employees so it's the smaller companies that we're talking about yeah and, and uh, there's you know so close to 78 million different companies uh, in the, in the United States that we're referencing and advising you about and so a lot of people have got lots of experience out there all you need to do is knock on their door and call them up and uh, have a little conversation people love to give up information free because it's a recognition of their success so when, when people have been mm -hmm. successful they're, they're happy to share their uh, share advice to you yeah uh, here in Bozeman we have two companies uh, that uh, come to mind one is persnickety cleaners uh, if you're going to look that up, do you know how to spell per persnickety? <laughs> I don't I, even know what it means. <laughs> well, it means um, it, it means uh, very uh, conscious. Uh, if oh, you're persnickety, you you're yeah, you're very conscious of uh, what's going on or whatever. So they're they're very persnickety with your clothing. So yeah, supposedly something like that. I think I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> If you can spell yeah, it, I think um, I think you can find in for a small business. Yes, it may be end up doing successful and maybe even regional, maybe maybe national. Um, you know, two two vowels, you know, four consonants, you know, five or six letter word is more than sufficient. Yeah. Um, and because it it just makes a lot more sense. Uh, there was a father and and son working together uh, during COVID. He drove up to a Tim, Tim Hortons. And he saw that the fellow was putting caps on coffee cups after taking change from people and wasn't wearing gloves. And he thought, well, that's pretty strange. So he went home, talked to his dad about it. His dad went to the down to his shop because he was an engineer real quick. And he came up with an idea, went to a friend, molded it. And it was basically a piece of hard rubber with a coarse lining on it that you could put on a cap and then stick on the cup without touching the cap and uh you know they went through all the things they, they're supposed to we're talking about you know they went and filed a patent pending and all these great things and then tim horton went and had someone copy it and so you know, we'll talk about these things as we go along and that's why you know proprietary technology is really tough you, you mm -hmm. have to have some backing or you need to have uh, support from um, from funding to protect your interest in, in something you invent. So the things we're talking about and referencing aren't so much inventions. Um, in the 21st century, you'll find that there's greater opportunity in doing something on your own um, at home, uh, you know, on the computer. Yeah, uh, It may already be an established company where you act as a third party. Nothing wrong with that. There's big money in that. I mean, sure. Like Uber people are doing the reservation uh, at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pizza Hut perfect example when you call someone for a pizza from most companies you're reaching somebody at home that's yeah in any case you sure are yeah you're you're, yeah, you're, you're talking online. to somebody in iowa yeah yeah <laughs> you, you've got a computer online and uh, they, they're gonna look up because of your phone number you know the closest area they, they may even ask you what area you live in to get a real close uh, store and and then they put just put the order in for you so they're basically doing what you're too lazy to do yourself but they're getting paid a percentage for doing it so all these things are relative they they of course you know don't need a company necessarily but they could get one they could set one up you know i do order pizzas or, or whatever uh, yeah. it's not something they're going to market save some money but they, they will want to do it to get the tax benefits or you know the expense sure benefits. 
yeah. that you can get. So these are why there's different types of businesses that are um, important to look at in, in the uh, in the prospect of how you set it up and, you know, what the potential for it mm-hmm. is. Yeah, that's true. Well, we got another business here in uh, Bozeman, uh, the Gesundheit Condi- uh, Nutrition Store. <laughs> and this is a guy from Austria that set up this uh, business store. And I'm not sure how many people can spell Gesundheit uh, <laughs> to look it up or find it. I guess uh, I guess you can. This was a lot more important when people wrote checks uh, than it is now. Uh, you know, checks are kind of... Um, and I can't remember the last time I wrote a check for anything. <laughs> you know, you either pay online or you, uh, you know, it just comes right out of your bank account, and goes to wherever it's supposed to go. So uh, we don't well, we don't I, write checks as much as we used to. And and you know, this is a huge success. A tremendous person, uh, uh, absolute volumes of wealth of knowledge, and he started like forty years ago before all mm-hmm. this started. So he, he melded into it. He developed, you know, it was part of networking once the whole internet came along and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, so he'd already established his name and 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 uh, the company in Bozeman. And he, he basically was a health person that provided health yeah. mm-hmm. and vitamin uh, uh, products. And then he started getting into natural path medicine. And uh, then he got on the radio and he had a terrific show on the radio uh actually before us yeah he, he used to be our lead in <clears throat> and uh, he would have terrific people on from around the country about uh different uh, types of naturopath uh healing but mm-hmm. but it wasn't anything other than uh similar to what the chinese believe and you know the, the concept of medicine in china has always yeah. been you know if the body operates cleanly and all the systems flow naturally there's no blocking yeah. Well, we're not we're not here to talk about Chinese medicine. I'm here to use this as an example so people can appreciate how it can apply to them. Thank you. Well, that's okay. The whole idea was to network this uh, in in a city uh, where where it would network to people, um, you know, for all different ages. It would network for people in all different types of business. It would network for people in all types of cases that they would have. So, again, what you sell, what you offer what you use to try and generate revenue and income in a business, uh, there's got to be this thought that you put into it. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Jim says Ivanka and Donald Trump had good brand names. What are they going to do since the Democratic establishment and the news media is trying to demolish them? Well, uh, they're not going to change their names. So uh, they are going to they are going to uh, uh, work to. Um, you know, overcome that, uh, that stigma. Uh, and if they can't, um, you know, Ivanka certainly has a brand name in her, um, uh, clothing lines and other things. Um, you know, Donald's got all the businesses, but I don't know, uh, in his case, uh, it's whether or not it's to your advantage to do business with him or not, uh, or Ivanka for that matter. Do you want her, do you want her, uh, clothing line, more than you worry about uh, who or what she is. Well, it's an uh, important topic. So um, w- one of the aspects of, of uh, uh, networking with regards to your name is referred to as branding. Mm. It, it's a global uh, word used in, in global marketing in reference to a name that will have particular attraction, like the Nike check. Um, you know, uh, different, th- you know, different types of clothing. We all know the Calvin Klein CK look and boss, Hugo boss, B O S S. These are all names that have become branded. Tiffany's perfect example. They're one word con- names. If you notice, they're like less well, Tiffany's not, but, but they, you have two syllables and a few letters and they're, they're memorable. So branding becomes a very important aspect and how you brand and the depth to which your brand becomes important again in your business plan and your income statement. In the case of the Trumps, they spent a fortune, uh, literally, of uh, uh, having legal brands established that protect their interest. And so, what they've done is they protected the downside. And uh, it's a good question that uh, we got from uh, from the man himself because it is relevant. And the Trumps have gone to great lengths to secure. 
a, a buyout, which you can have. It's like severance in a job. If, you, if you've ever been in a situation where you've been at work and lost the job or been let go and you get severance, they, they pay you for leaving or letting you go. Um, th this also occurs with brand naming. If, if it's a brand name that is recognized, you can get all, we make all kinds of demands for it to be utilized. And that's what the Trumps did. So in the case of a lot of things that we've read about now over the weekend, not going to go there. A couple of them, they've said, you know, this is a contract that can't be broken. Uh, there'll, there'll be penalties that'll be paid by people that choose no longer to use uh, the Trump name. And, uh, you know, they will have a short, uh, uh, unfortunate end to that benefit. But th they will continue because there's uh, far greater places than the United States to, to build what he wants to build that people still want. Sure. He can tell yeah. he's accomplished. So it, it's okay. a good name. It's still a good brand. Linda says starting a company that is a service to people is profitable. I do cleaning for businesses and for individuals. And yeah, that's a, uh, as we uh, as we go along, we're going to talk about uh, in future podcasts, the difference between tangible and intangible businesses where you can hold the product in your hand or you can't hold the product in your hand. That's so right. we'll be talking about that as we uh, as we go down the uh, down the line. Uh, the next thing we uh, we need to talk about is uh, you need to uh, you, your name. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. Um, you may grow into other areas uh, like Amazon, for example, as we pointed out earlier, they could have been books or us or books online or books, uh, books to you or whatever. But they uh, they knew or at least I think they knew they were going on to other you know, other ventures. So uh, Amazon now is an umbrella name for almost everything, anything you want to buy, you can probably find on Amazon. And a lot of people have set up uh, their own businesses through Amazon where they're a third party to Amazon or a third party to the seller, I should say. And, uh, you know, they offer their products on Amazon and, uh, you know, you buy them, Amazon gets a cut, so do you and uh, works out pretty well. So, but when you design your name, if you're going to be a future growth type company, or if you, um, you know, if you're going to start out as a, a mechanic, but you think down the line you're going to have a parts store as well, or something like that, then uh, you need to think about how are these two, how are these two entities going to gel together? Well, that's easily defined on your website. Uh, if, if, you, if you become successful, a website answers all. You don't have to add your name. You don't have to increase it. You don't have to even redefine it. You just increase your uh, your website and add to your website what you're going to do. And, and you put up more titles and, and areas to look. I, you know, I, I've always looked at Amazon <clears throat> as an anecdote to trade. You know, trade is what, is, is what commerce is about. And uh, Bezos, I think, looked at this as not just for books, but for a delivery system, because <clears throat> that was part of what his plan was. It wasn't just selling books. It was how he's going to sell them and how he's going to put all the publishers out of business and how he's going to put all the bookstores out of business. And, you know, in, in ancient times, roadways didn't ex exist up and really until the Roman times. They, they were paths and so forth. But the greatest need uh, for trade were, were, were the rivers to the oceans and then the oceans to the seas. So <clears throat> I think he always looked at Amazon as a trade route, potentially, where he would be able to trade and, and do commerce. And, and it's worked out very well for him because, as, as you pointed out, he's, he adopted several things. So keep in mind, again, it, the importance of your name is identity, easiness, uh, something someone can write down simply or put down in their phone, uh, which people use a lot, um, <clears throat> and a reference to what you do. It doesn't have to be. You can establish that reference with the product that, and the website you build and the business that you pro uh, become, you know, hopefully become successful with. Yeah. Well, another thing we need to talk about is... Um, your name describes your business or does your name describe your business? Maybe the question we need to ask, uh, for example, Andy's landscaping, uh, Linda's uh, home cleaning service, um, you know, John's auto repair or foreign auto repair or something like that. Um, so another thing that you can do, um, depending on what you want to do, uh, adding your city name uh, to your business 
can make a difference too because people who are moving to your area may want to find Bozeman Auto Repair or they might want to find, uh, you know, New York's uh, Best Dry Cleaners or something like that. So uh, sometimes uh, that can uh, that can help you also with your .com search. If there's a similar name, adding your city name to your business can uh, separate that out and you can uh, do that. So. And the other thing, too, is, and, and this is one of these sneaky little plays, but, uh, you know, they, t- they say that you'll you'll touch your face over 500 times a day. Some, some scientists say more because we've been through COVID, so we've learned all these things. But keep in mind that once and if you do put a website up, be going to it all the time because you and search for it. Don't, don't you, know, you know, go on Google, go on Bing, mm-hmm. search for your own website, because their predicate for what rating you get for people to see your website is how often it's, you know, searched, how often mm-hmm. people want to call it up. So and click you, on it, yeah. yeah. And click on it. So if you, you know, even if you're starting in a small town like Bozeman, you know, and and make reference, you know, on your website to, to best search your company. So people will remember that as well. So, yeah, these are all the tricks of the trade. And we're going to have fun sharing them with you. So you'll be more successful from a marketing side. Absolutely. Yeah. Next, we um, ask your friends and neighbors uh, what they think of the name. Um, don't get don't get thin skinned about this. If they say they oh, I hate that name, don't don't necessarily discount it because some guy on a bar stool doesn't like it. Um, make sure to ask them why. What's the problem with the name? Is it spelling? Is it pronunciation? Is it uh, does it not describe the business? Um, you know, does it not uh, describe who we are and all of that? So, uh, you know, asking friends and neighbors, um, you know, I'm thinking about calling my name this. What do you What do you think? Yeah, because it could be your luck. You're sitting next to a guy at the, on, on a bar still drinking whiskey who's, you know, ex-wife was, that was her nickname. So you yeah. Know, you make that <laughs> yeah. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. So. And uh, this one probably sounds really silly, <laughs> this, this next one, but uh, how does it sound when said aloud? How does your how does your name sound when you say it aloud? Um well, you, a perfect example is Nike. It's spelled N-I-K-E. Yeah, so and it looks like Nikki. It, it, it could either be pronounced normally as Nikki or Nike. Yeah. Based on English, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, it, they had to do a marketing job to sell it as Nike. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, at one point, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, they had a hash on top of the E, you know, to give it at some kind of, you know, French. You know, yeah, an accent, sort yeah. of. So a Nike, so and it's it's been a very interesting thing that that you've seen it come about, and uh, you know then then they've gone so far as uh, you know just twenty years ago, they actually got rid of the brand name Nike on products and just put checks on it. You know you've seen me wear my Nike hat with the check on it. Um, mm-hmm. I have that because of a great golfer that made one of the greatest golf shots uh, you know at the Masters I've seen in my life. So. That's why yeah. I wear it. It's the only reason I wear it to remind myself of it. But it, the point is, is that every moment in your time as a successful business person, <clears throat> opportunities will arise, and these are the things you want to grasp, especially when it comes to recognition of your company or its name. And if you can utilize it, you should. You you should always utilize the, what you see as a potential upside for no, mm-hmm. better networking or for better branding. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Last but not least, uh, <clears throat> once you get it done, are you happy with it? <laughs> you know, obviously, you you have to be because you're gonna you're gonna be promoting it everywhere uh, in every possible way. So uh, you've got to be, you know. Um, sometimes you've. It's it's like anything else. When you start a project, you wonder when when is it going to be done. <laughs> when is this going to end? Well, it, think of it to, in terms of your middle name. Um, by that, what I mean is that's as personal as you can get. And not, you know, I have my name is Kelly Shane Montalban. Um, the, the, the reason I'm not called Kelly, gone into it before, won't do it today. So I've always gone by my middle name, Shane. 
And the benefit of that is on my business cards, I put Kelly Shane Montel. Them. So if people called me and called me Kelly, I knew they didn't know me because mm -hmm. only people that knew me used my middle name. So, you know, that's an example of how I say, look at this like your middle name. So, you, you know, it, you know, Bob going to go clean floors, Stenson. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does going to go clean floors make you happy? I, I don't know. So yeah. this is why you, we're giving you these hints of, of ways to look at the name and mm -hmm. how, again, it, it, it uh, will respond to other people. Because remember, this is something you're doing and it's personal. This is not personal to anyone else. Business is not personal. And all too often, people make this personal. Do not mm -hmm. make it personal. This is yeah. just a business decision. And, uh, you know, it's fun to get, get giddy about it at the beginning. But, you know, 10, down, 10 years down the road, you may don't want to look back and go, why did I come up with this? Thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not where you want to be in 10 years. In 10 years, you want to be, well, that was the greatest idea. Of one. It was almost yeah. as good as the idea of the work I wanted to do. You know, that's, that's for sure. That's where you want to be with the joy and happiness of this. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a beauty shop uh, called Curl Up and Die, D Y E. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so, memorable. Uh, says what it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I thought it was a great name for, uh, for a uh, beauty parlor. So, beyond words, as, as they say. Perfect. Yeah. Words. All right. right. Them is always a great word. Mm -hmm. In, in the name of a company it, it really is cinnamon and there's a lot of them i mean when you look at the success of industries let, let's just take for example cars because we all know them um in you know in interestingly enough uh, you know in ford's case they like to use animal pinto mustang you know mm -hmm. and uh when it comes to gm they like to use gods you know they use names of god yeah <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's one of these things that you look at and, and of course you don't have a marketing department because you're yeah. the man. So again, something you want to be happy about, but not too excited and don't take it personal. Yeah. Um, we're going to put some resources uh, on Facebook and both, uh, well, uh, Facebook and our um, rebroadcasts and also on YouTube. Uh, there are some things out there that will help you create a business name. So we're going to put those uh, up as we go along. And um, uh, Jim, that's too long to read. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm going to put that comment up. Uh, it's just too long. Shorten it, shorten it, and put it up again. Don't need all the backstory. Just ask the question or make yeah, the comment. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that thing will take up the whole screen. All right, Shane, you want to do a market wrap up before we go? Uh, yeah, well, we still have some time, but I'm happy to do the market wrap up always. Uh, yeah. You know, the market is responding quite well. And again, for a Tuesday after yesterday, um, it's it's shown uh, a trade off. Uh, a lot of this is uh, because of, of a couple of things I'll tell you in a minute. But right now, the Dow's down 17 to 30,954. Uh, the Standard & Poor's is down 10.71 at uh, 33,789. Interestingly enough, Tesla has now been added to that. And NASDAQ 100 is at uh, 12,848, down 54. Most global markets are down. Um, a lot of this has to do with, of course, what more important than commodities. Um, oil now is moving to $53 in West Texas, 56 in Europe. And uh, clearly that's an expectation of the new uh, old Biden administration and their, their intentions. Natural gas is holding at uh, 281 and it will go up. So that's a good thing for gas production in the U.S., but we'll see what the government decides there as well. Um, the most important thing, I guess, <clears throat> in markets for us to talk about today are currencies. My goodness gracious, not just uh, the currencies that we talk about, but Bitcoin. I mean, it's uh, been... Uh, a real trader was up to nearly 40,000. It's down to 34,000, down $800 today. But uh, most you, most currencies are uh, up a bit, uh, 121 on the euro. The Canadian dollar is uh, 127, so it's still holding in there. So the U.S. dollar is strengthening against other currencies, uh, 135 on the, on the British pound. Um, but uh, one of the con concerns, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the concerns I have overall and I will bring it up now, is the 10-year note is now uh, 117, up uh, modestly, 
2.03. Got to watch this because when the interest rate on debt, particularly the 10 year debt, it goes up. That means the price of bonds are going down and they're going down because people are selling them. Uh, we have to be concerned about this because the U.S. is expecting to spend a lot more money in the next four years and they're selling it to themselves and we keep reminding everyone that so we're watching that closely so there's your market wrap up for tuesday all right that sounds good all right that's going to wrap it up for us hey if you're watching on youtube don't forget to subscribe in the lower right hand uh, corner down down there below the internet and click on the notification bell so that uh, you'll never miss a uh, another podcast of ours and of course uh, uh, we are on every Saturday with our political show, uh, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click listen now over at KMMSAM.com. And if you uh, missed any of our shows, including this one, uh, watch or listen to past shows at KMMSAM.com. Or, of course, we're on YouTube at Tom and Shane No Business and Politics. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed be happy, be safe, live in the moment live to work everyone take care and god bless all right thanks everybody for watching hey uh, all views are welcome here and of course uh, if you think it there we'll say it here so tune in for uh, future podcasts that will help your small business uh, grow and prosper and uh, we'll see everybody on thursday at 10 a.m mountain time